your busy schedules. Although, if it's like my office, it's a little quiet. <laughs> so, well, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks to Katzoff for inviting me to do this presentation. So, today's presentation, I'm going to be just sharing very quickly as many tips as I can get into the next hour. It's 60 tips in 60 minutes, so I do have to go really quickly through these. And um, but my goal is to show you at least a handful or hopefully way more than that, of tips and tricks that are going to help you be successful uh, when, right after the webinar. Maybe you can try these tips right after you're done with the, we're done with this presentation. And this particular tips and tricks is not focused on any specific release of AutoCAD. It's a kind of a hodgepodge of many different releases. So no matter what release you're on, I would hope that you could find some tips that will help you be effective. And uh, also for those of you who are LT users, probably 90% of this presentation will also work in LT. I'll try to remember to point it out if it's not an LT feature. Um, sometimes I forget, but I'll do the best I can. Okay, all right, let's get going. So if you've ever seen me do a presentation before, you know that I am self-admitted lazy. I'm all about efficiency. I don't want to have to do any more work than absolutely necessary. No more picks or clicks than I have to. It's a waste of time. And I don't know if you feel the same way, but uh, I'm going to just share with you a few what I call my lazy layer tips. That's going to help avoid any excess picks and clicks. So I'm going to jump over to AutoCAD. We're going to get going. I always joke this presentation isn't as funny as the other ones <laughs> just because I have to go quickly, super, super quickly. And actually, to start off today, I'm going to um, be sharing with you. Oh, I got rid of this. Put it back in. So you don't see that. I'm, I'm going to be starting off with this very complex and complicated drawing. It's actually just a great drawing for showing these examples, so bear with me. I know it's a pretty, not a very exciting drawing. So the first thing I like to do, you saw I just deleted that from the Quick Access Toolbar. Um, I do not like having to always, you know, go back to the Home tab in order to change my current layer. Too lazy for that. So I highly recommend that you do a right click on that layer drop-down list and you just add that to the Quick Access Toolbar. Because then, no matter where you are, you can get to it and quickly change your current layer. All right, that's my first tip. And then also, um, you can set default layers for hatching and for dimensions. And I want to make sure that you know that they're in there, uh, especially hatching is hidden. Uh, so I'm going to go into the hatch command. And I like you to you know, note that um, my current layer is plant shrub hatch. Okay, it's conveniently already set up for that. But if I drop down the properties option in, the, in that particular panel of hatch, you will see that there is an option where I can override whatever the current layer is. So that whenever I go into hatching, it will by default use a specific layer. So I highly recommend that you do that. And then whenever you go into hatching, you don't have to worry about changing your current layer. When you're done hatching, it goes back to whatever the current layer was previously. Um, same is true with dimensioning. If I go to annotate, you will see that there is a drop-down list for dimensions. And so you could go ahead and you can set your current layer for dimensioning. And once again, when you go into dimensioning, you don't have to think about changing your current layer. It will do it for you automatically, and then it will put it back when you're finished. I will give you a disclaimer. Uh, if you are in AutoCAD 2016, this only works if you're using the cool new one-stop shop dimension tool that I'm pointing at, which I'll show you later. At 2017, it works, you know, really mostly for any kind of dimensioning. So there is a small, you do have to be on 16 or 17 to be able to use that feature. All right, back over to the PowerPoint. All right, now, just so you know, the third most frequently used command in AutoCAD is layer. Any guesses what the first one is? Sadly, it's undo. The second one is anything that has to do with zooming or panning. So I thought I would share with you some layer tips since it's such a frequently used command. And I'm going to show you all different types of layer uh, tips that are going to hopefully save you some time. Right, so I'm going to jump back over from here. And incidentally, if it, if you, it turns out that you want this presentation, I'll work with Mary so that we can uh, get it to you. Because I'm going to go so quickly, you won't be able to probably write everything down. If you're even writing anything down, I don't even know. <laughs> All right, so if you've ever been in a situation where you had one set of layer standards, and then it turned out that uh, you had to, to shift to a different standard, and the layer names needed to change, maybe the proxies needed to change. 
So you can go into the layered dialog box and you can do it one at a time, but oh, how painful is that? Instead, use this cool tool that's been in AutoCAD for a long time. It's called Layer Trans, and it translates layers from one set to another. So the trick here is, though, you do have to have a drawing with the correct standard. So I would say load, and I would select that drawing that already has the right layers in it with the light properties, and I'm just going to make it up. I'll just pick this one, for example. And then after you've done that, the first thing I like to do is I like to map the same so that I can connect the layers up that are exactly the same. I don't have to map those individually. And then after that, it's really simply a matter of saying, well, this layer over here really need, now needs to be called this layer over here. I'm just making this up, as you can see. And then you go through what I would say is a laborious process, um, but way, still way better than going into the layer dialog box. Right? But here's the trick. Once you have mapped all of the layers together, then you can do a save. And it will save it, save it out to a DWS file. Just save that somewhere that you can easily find it. And then the next time you go into Lay Trans, if you find yourself doing this over and over and over again in multiple drawings, next time you're going to click on Load. And you're going to load that DWS file. it will drop this down. You're going to load the DWS file instead. And then you will see that it will trans, it'll automatically map those layers really, really quickly. It'll just take a few seconds, and you won't have to go through that laborious mapping part of it. It'll save you tons and tons of time. First time, super tedious. Second time after that, piece of cake. So then you would, of course, just click on Translate. It lets you know what changes it's going to make. But super friendly command, super easy, going to save you lots and lots of time. Right. And then I'm sure many of you are familiar with the lay walk command, but for those of you who are not, underneath the layers panel, you'll see this two little feet for layer walk. This command is helpful if you just want to see what's on each of the different layers. You know, you don't want to go in the layer dialog box and turn the layers on and off. This is so much easier. And you can do this kind of the opposite way as well. You can, you can select objects, and then it will tell you what layer those objects are on. All right. So that is Lay Walk. Okay, and I'm sure many of you are familiar also with Lay Isolate and Lay Unisolate. Lay, I need to work on some objects. My other layers are in the way. This is just a fast way to lock and fade the other layers so they don't get in the way. I'm going to say this is the layer I want to work on. This is not a very complicated drawing. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit an Enter there. And you can you see as I move my cursor over all of the other layers that those layers are locked. And if they're locked, that means I can't hurt them, right? And you also have control over the fading factor. Do you want it to fade it a lot more? Do you want it to fade it a lot less? You know, that's up to you. Sometimes you don't want to see the other layers at all. Totally up to you. And then, of course, the opposite of that would be lay un-iso. Un-isolate, that brings them all back. So that's one way to control what layers are showing up in your drawing and to, to control it so they show up. You know, you can modify it super quickly which I absolutely love. So don't forget about layer isolate and layer unisolate. And then layer merge. If you have more than one layer that you want to merge together into one final layer. For example, I want these three layers to be to be merged into the plants layer. Okay, before I do that, let me set a different current layer. So I'm going to select any I'm going to select these two layers right here. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to say merge selected layers to. This executes the lay merge command, incidentally. And then it says, well, what layer do you want to merge it into? I want them all to reside on the plants layer. All right now, it will come back and it will say the selected layers will be merged into layer plants and ask you if you want to continue. What that should really say is that we're going to delete those two layers. <laughs> Just so you know, they will be gone from your life. It's a little bit more of a commitment than it makes it look right here. But um, I'm willing to make that commitment. I am ready for some commitment. And you will see now those other two layers are gone, and all those objects have been merged, have been merged onto the plants layer. Okay, I'm actually going to undo that. But nevertheless, that was pretty simple to do too. There is a separate lay merge command as well. If you don't want to do it in the layer dialog box, we can see it. Uh, if, you, if you've ever been in a situation where you wanted to bring a bunch of layers from one drawing into your current drawing, I'm going to show you a super simple way of doing that. So once again, note there are not very many layers in this drawing, right? Not too many. 
Uh, but I, I need to add a whole bunch of other layers from whatever drawing I'm working with. Maybe I'm working with a company that I need to use their layers as well. So I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to go in the insert command. I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to go find that drawing file that has the right layers. I'm just going to pick this one for now. Okay, now go ahead and say OK. Now I don't really want to put that drawing file in here. Right? I don't want those objects in there. I only want the layers. So at this point I'm going to hit an escape. I'm going to patiently hit an escape. <laughs> now take a look at all the layers I have in my drawing file. All the layers from that other drawing came in, took me like five seconds to do it, and uh, it was super easy. All right, I'm going to undo that too. All right, let's see what else. So copy to layer. Copy to layer allows you to kill two birds with one stone. Even though I don't know why we always feel the need to kill two birds with one stone, it doesn't sound very nice to me. But, so copy to layer allows you to copy objects from one layer to another, make, makes a copy of them, and uh, without having to do it the way we would normally do it, right? We'd probably make an, a copy of an object someplace, and then we would change the layer of that object. Now we can do them both at the same time. So I, let's just say I want to, um, you know, it's it's on, I know it's on the ribbon. I'm just misbehaving right now. Uh, copy to layer. I want to make a copy of this plant, but I really want it on a different layer, and I actually want it somewhere else on my drawing. So select the objects to copy. I got that. And now it wants to know to, what destination layer do I want it to end up on. Oh, I want it to end up on this layer here. I don't even know what it is. You could, you could type it in. You could say uh, hit an enter and it will give you a list of the layers as well. I just selected objects that were on the correct layer. It's up to you. Now if I just hit an enter right now, it will make a copy of that object in the exact same location. But I want to actually move it at the same time. So I'm going to say I want to do a displacement, and then I'll basically, you know, you can type in a value, like I could type in like 20 or something like that, and it would move it 20 units over to the right. And that's okay. All right. Or you can type in an X and a Y, it's up to you. So that is an example of copy to layer. And now I have a plant right on a wall, which is always is, is definitely not so good. <laughs> Let's go back over to the PowerPoint. And I'll talk about the last step. You can see we went through all of these. And a lay down. So I, if you've ever had that one layer that you can't get rid of no matter what, you know, you can't purge it, it won't let you purge it. And you zoom around on that layer, you try to figure out what is on that layer, I can't see anything, turn off all the layers except for that one layer, but that layer just will not go away. All right, so you know, it's not really hurting you, it's not really slowing you down, but that is not the point, right? The point is, is that it's so annoying. And that layer must die a long and painful death. <laughs> so, get rid of that layer. Use the lay del command. And believe me, it will delete any layer, even if there are objects on that layer. In most cases, the problem is that that layer is referenced into probably a block or something like that. It doesn't care. Lay del does not care. Lay del will actually open up that layer definition. It will rip that layer out of that block. It will redefine the block on the fly, and then it will delete that layer. Now that is power. And just remember that where there is power, there is danger. <laughs> so keep that in mind, because it will let you delete all layers. Okay, I lied. Not all layers. There are two layers. It won't let you delete. I bet you know what those are. It won't let you delete zero, and it won't let you delete. Which one? Death points, exactly. But other than that, it's every man for himself. All right? So. Those are some layer tips. Hopefully you're holding on. I told you I'd be going really quickly. Taking a look, I'm not too far behind. All right, object selection tips. Let's face it, we are selecting objects all the time. We want to be able to do that effectively as well. All right, so let's jump back over to AutoCAD, and we're going to take a look at some of these tips. We're going to go over to a different drawing file. All right. So, have you ever had to work on somebody else's drawing? You have no idea what they did in that drawing. You don't know what the styles were, what the settings were, what their properties are, and you just need to add a few more objects. For example, I need to add another, what, what is it? I don't know. It is a, if I sit for a second, it should tell me it's a polyline, but maybe today it's not going to tell me. But what, it doesn't matter. I don't have to know what it is, because I am going to use this add selected tool, and it's going to make a, 
allow me to make another object with the same properties as this one. All right? So let me show you. So take a look at the, you'll see that we're on layer zero. Should never be on layer zero, but I am. I'm going to go ahead and select this object. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to say add selected because I'm lazy. And now it will figure out the properties. Take a look at change my current layer temporarily. And now I can come in and I can get another object that looks just like that one. I love it. That's fantastic. Okay, how about dimensioning? I don't know what dimension style this is. Maybe there's overrides on it. Who knows? I want another dimension just like that. I don't want to have to do a reconnaissance mission and find out all the information on that dimension. Same thing, right click, add selected. And now I can very quickly break all drafting standards and put another dimension in just like that one. I don't have to know anything about the style. You can do that with text. You can do it with hatching. Um, do yourself a favor. It saves you lots of time to use add selected. I'm an ad selected car salesman today. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else. Oh my gosh, my drafting teacher would have a heart attack right here if she could see that. Okay, so I need to fix these rotated dimensions. It looks like there's a bunch of them. Some of them are okay. Looks like there's a bunch of them that are wrong though. So I'm going to select one of the rotated dimensions and do a right click. And I didn't want to get all of the rotated dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and say select similar. And it went out and it found all the rotated dimensions that were on the same layer. And I'll show you how I know that in just a second. All right, now I'm simply going to go into properties. I'm going to go into properties. <laughs> and I'm going to go down and find the text rotation. And let's fix that. Let's put that at zero. Now if I take a look, you will see the world is a beautiful place. All right, so fix them all. One shot. Fabulous. Now. I mentioned to you that it was all of the rotated dimensions on the same layer. How do I know that? I'm going to go back into the select similar command. I'm going to say SE for setting. You will see that it is grabbing all of the same type of objects right here. I'm not sure why it says name. I think it should say type. Nobody asked me. And that are on the same layer. All right? Okay. So if I didn't, if I turned off layer, then it would grab all of the objects, all of the rotated dimensions, regardless of the layer. Correct? All right. All right. So use that to help you get the objects that you want. All right. So this is has parts of this drawing is pretty complicated. Um, if you've ever been in a situation where you had an object right on top of another object and you're having problems getting to the right object, it happens all the time with hatching and boundaries, right? So uh, there is this cool tool called Selection Cycling. You can also get to it with the Control W. I'm going to go ahead and hit Selection Cycling. Now I want you to notice that as I move my cursor around, can you see those two little black boxes that used to be blue? Somehow they decided they should be black. I think it's easier to see them if they're blue. Um, so, we got, so depending on what release you're on, they could be blue boxes, they could be black boxes. It doesn't matter what color they are. It means that there is more than one object underneath the pick box. For example, if I select here, it will give me a dialog box of everything it found underneath the pick box. There's a polyline. There's a block reference. Notice as I move down the list, it highlights the appropriate object and a line and a rotated dimension. I was a good shot today. I got four different things with one pick box. So for example, maybe I wanted to delete that rotated dimension. I could select it and then I can very simply go into the erase command or whatever the situation is, okay? So the thing I, I sometimes love this feature, selection cycling, and sometimes it just drives me nuts. So I like the fact that I can do a control W to turn it on and off whenever I want it. So I'm turning it off so it doesn't bug me. I have a love-hate relationship with that tool. Sometimes I absolutely love it. The rest of the time I usually want it to not be alive and well. So, um, so uh, when we, we, I showed you lay isolate, layer and isolate. Oftentimes we control the display of the objects in AutoCAD by turning the layers on and off, right? That's how we've done it for years. Well, hopefully you know that there is another tool called object isolation that you can use instead. And I think it's really fast and really efficient. So for example, um, I want to select this. It's an XREF. And 
Um, that's actually all I want to have displayed. Actually, maybe I'll grab a few more things. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to say isolate, isolate objects. Everything that I have selected will be left on the screen. Everything else will now be invisible. If you can't see it, you know you can't edit it, right? So if I zoom in, I can also do this the opposite way. And note, I didn't do any of this by controlling layers. It has nothing to do with layers. Um, I also think there's still too many things in here. It's too crowded for me. So I want to do a right click, isolate. This time I'm going to hide objects. So the objects that I have selected will be hidden. So you can either pick the objects that you want to keep or the ones that you want to hide, right? All right. So. Now I could go ahead and I can do my edits, and then when I'm finished, I can end the, op the object isolation. I think I have a little frog in my throat right now, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me, haven't had one all day. Only when I'm presenting. So I can do a right click. What you doing? Sorry. <laughs> little added issue there. And I could say end object isolation, or if you go down to the lower right hand corner of your status bar, this little tool here, it used to be a light bulb. I loved it when it was a light bulb because it was so obvious what was happening. Now, if it has that little blue circle, that means that there are isolated objects or hidden objects. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to say end object isolation, and then everything will come back into my drawing. All right. And I do kind of joke that this is a great way to <laughs> hide everything, walk away. I don't think everything's gone. Of course, it's not gone, but it looks like it's gone. So the other point to that would be um, that when you leave AutoCAD, when you leave that joint file, you come back in, by default, everything will come back. So if you did it to your coworker and they exited the join and they came back in, everything would be back. No harm, no foul. If you are a CAD manager, I should point out that there is a system variable that you can use to override that object isolation mode. If you set it to one and you isolate objects or you hide objects and you leave the drawing and you come back, they will still be hidden. That's a super way to torture your coworkers. Don't do that. It's the holidays. Be nice. But nevertheless, uh, you should be aware of that system variable because it's pretty lethal. It's a lethal system variable. So um, I did a previous webcast with a with CADSoft, and I talked about the new features inside of AutoCAD 2017, and I talked about this as well, but I want to point out the new updated features that just came out in the latest update. How do you get the update? You need to be a subscriber, and you can download the latest update. It's update 2017.1. There's, there's quite a few cool tools in that update. All, of them. All right, so for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let me catch everybody up. With AutoCAD 2017, you can bring a PDF file into AutoCAD and you can have it convert them, the PDF to AutoCAD objects. By far the biggest crowd pleaser inside of AutoCAD 2017. All right, I love showing this feature because everybody loves it. So let me just quickly show you how to do it. I want to point out the two type fonts come across no problem. Raster images come across, no problem. They come in as PNG files. SHX fonts, problem. <laughs> they don't come in as fonts. They come in as geometry, individual polylines and ellipses. And so that means you can't really edit the text if it's an SHX font. Uh, so cool new tools in the update allow you to convert that SHX text to uh, an AutoCAD text object so it's not individual objects. And then, of course, you can convert those individual text strings to mtext. All right, I'm going to run through these really, really quickly. So back over to AutoCAD. <clears throat> so first off, this happens to be an underlay. All right, if you want to, you can convert an underlay to a PDF as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on here. You can, excuse me, it's a PDF underlay. You can convert that to AutoCAD objects. That's what I meant to say. So. You can tell that it's an underlay because when I clicked on it, the tab changed on the ribbon to say PDF underlay. And let me really quickly just turn off a few layers just to make this a little more clear. It'll still work if I don't, but I did I just turn off all the layers? <laughs> Let's, 
<laughs> Good job, Lynn. Look it, it made them all invisible. Let's try that again. Let's turn this one off and this one and this one. All right, that's better. <laughs> and now I'm going to say import as objects. I just want this one view right here. I can bring them all in, but I don't want them all. And then I'm going to unload that PDF file. Give it just a second. It's thinking. And I want you to see that it converted all of these to objects. Now it's decided to let me know what type of object it is. That quick preview just started to show back up. Okay. All right. But, okay, so that's one way of doing it. If you have a PDF underlay, you can see how easy it was to convert that underlay to AutoCAD objects. Now, in most cases, you're probably going to want to insert a PDF file. You're going to use that really cool PDF import tool. I conveniently have this one right here, easy to get to. You want to convert that, you want to bring it in and have it converted to AutoCAD objects. All right, so I'm going to bring in the third page. I happen to know the scale factor is a quarter inch equals a foot, so I'm going to scale it up 48. We all learned that in our AutoCAD classes, right? Or drafting classes as well. Now, there is so much to this command. In this particular webcast, I'm not going to go into details. <coughs> Excuse me. You can watch one of the previous webcasts, but you know, do you want the layers to come in in the same layers that were in the PDF? Or um, do you want it to join line and arc segments? I would think so. And for line type, so I'm a big fan of this. It's not on by default. You should know that. It stays on once you turn it on. Um, if you have like a dash line type and you don't have this selected, it will bring all of those dashes in as individual objects. So that's up to you how you want to do it. Give it just a second to convert. You can see there are a lot of objects in that PDF file. It's thinking, 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 thinking. And look at that beautiful job it did. It did a great job. These are now AutoCAD objects. It recognizes that as M text. Um, this happens to be an SHX font. Uh-oh. Does not recognize it as text, right? That's an ellipse. That's a polyline. So, but this is a, there's a raster image that came in. If you go into options under files, you can control the directory for those raster images. Um, but let me show you this cool new tool. So I, these are all individual objects. I'm sad. I want to convert it to SHX. I want to convert my SHX text to be recognized as an AutoCAD text string. So I'm going to say recognize SHX text. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just put a window around these three lines right here for now. And I'm going to hit an enter and it says, oh, look, three text objects were created. I love that. All right, so now look at it converted them. That was easy. Okay, so bummer that it doesn't come in as a font, as text, I should say, as text. Bummer it doesn't come in as text, but it's so easy to convert it, right? Look at that. Oh, now I really wish all three of these were one M text object. Well, hopefully you are familiar with the text to M text express tool. That would not be an LT. But the good news is it grew up and became a real life AutoCAD command. So now even if you have LT, you can use it. As long as you install the update, just click on combine text and I can grab those three lines and it will convert it into one M text object. Check it out. So now you can control, you know, the width, right? which is usually what you want it for. All right, so that was pretty friendly. So let me just also point out there, is, there are some recognition settings that you can set so that it has a better chance of recognizing this SHX font in your PDF file. By default, this is bumped up pretty high, like 100%. It will never find it. <laughs> I put it like at 84, 85, and then it will recognize that text and convert it to AutoCAD text strings, M text strings, okay? All right. So much more I can say here, but I'm in a rush. There you go. PDF, bringing PDF files into AutoCAD as AutoCAD objects. Definitely a big wish list was granted there. My one of my favorite new features. Okay, make sure you install the update. Where am I? What time is it? Am I behind? I'm a little behind. All right, so we're going to power through. These are just time savers. They're kind of all over the map, but um, hopefully you'll find a few in here that will help you be more successful. And I just love this little cartoon down here. I'm all about saving time. So back over to AutoCAD.
let's go into this giant right there. That's not it. This, which one is it? It is. We sold. It is this one right here. Right, so if you've ever been in a situation where I just want to add in another arc right here, I want to add in a little spline, right? I want to add in a spline. There is a really cool command that did not have a good PR department because I find that hardly anybody knows about it. It's hiding under fillet and it's the blend command. Blending curves together. All I have to do is select this endpoint and, oh, you know what? Doesn't it drive you crazy when you're not in the viewport? Let's do it again. Blend curves, this endpoint and this endpoint, and it makes a beautiful curve to finish that off. A nice spline. It's a spline. Let's do it again. Let's come over here, pick this endpoint and that endpoint. Let's face it, you should just be drawing an, a new one, right? But that's okay. We're going to cheat. We'll just keep going. Have a little blend party. That almost looks round. <laughs> If I wanted to add in a spline curve right here, boy, if I tried to use the Pieta command, which is what most of us would try to do, um, really bad things would happen. You'd get this massive tangent curve that didn't look like anything you were after. Try using Blend. Blend does a beautiful job. All right, so now taking a look at this drawing file, I want, just want you to see, look at how many objects are in here. Ugh, it's a mess. It is a mess. What I really want is I want all of these to be one object. We're supposed to try to keep our entity count down. Somebody must have used the line command. They didn't use polylines or they exploded it or who knows what happens. So let's keep our entity count down. Let's make our life simple inside of AutoCAD. We're going to use the join command to clean this up. All right, I'm going to go into join. I'm just going to say all. Oh, I just want you to connect everything together that you possibly can to make it a nice clean drawing. And I'm going to hit an extra enter. It's very simple. It takes two seconds to clean your drawing up here. And now take a look. That whole object is now one polyline. You can see this is where I added in that blend. A great way to quickly clean up your drawing file. That's the story. Right. What else have we got? I'm going to go over to a different drawing here. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite. Um, some of these are, well, this command's really old. It's so old it's not even in, in the ribbon or anything like that. So here I have three lines, and I want to extend them out here. This is a fun little game to play with your coworkers, see if they can figure it out. And most of you would draw a construction line, and then you would use extend. I'm too lazy to draw construction lines. I don't want to draw any more construction lines than necessary. So I am going to use this old command, I have to make sure ortho is on, okay, called change. You have to type it in, because nobody knows about it, it's top secret. And I'm going to select these three lines. I'm going to hit an enter. And then it says specify change point. All right, I'm going to pick a point in space where I want this to be extended to. Look how easy that was. Didn't have to draw any construction lines. You can do the same thing and make them shorter. Let me turn off my object snaps for this one. Go back in the change command and I'll do previous. And then I'm going to hit an extra enter and where it says change point, once again, I'm just going to click on it to make them shorter. All right, super, super simple. Now, I did mention to you that I had to have my ortho on. Let me show you what happens if I don't have my ortho on. <laughs> Let's turn ortho off. Let's pick a point in space. Oh, probably not what you wanted. If it is what you wanted, there, there's one way of doing it. So make sure your ortho is on. Okay, so that's the change command to quickly lengthen and shorten lines without construction lines. I love grips. I use grips a lot. How do you have make more than one hot grip? Simply hold down the shift key. You can get more than one hot grip, and then you can stretch many, in this case, many corners at one time, right? Many vertices at one time, right? That's another one. Use the shift key for more than one hot grip. If you ever needed to put a, a tangent arc, between two parallel lines. Did you know you can fill it two parallel lines? Let's go into the fill it command. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, actually let's do, these two are different lengths. I'm going to fill it this one and this one. I want you to note whichever one I pick first wins. That endpoint will be used. It puts a nice, beautiful tangent arc in there. All right, so same deal. Let's do, uh, let's do fill it again. And I'm a big fan of the arrow keys to go through to get previously used commands, like two commands ago. I use the arrow key all the time. I don't know if you guys do. 
Okay, let's do the same thing. This time I'm going to pick this line first, and then that one. You'll see the first one wins. It extends this other one, and then puts a beautiful tangent arc between the two of them, just in case you didn't want to see that. Well, let's see what else I got here. Control to reverse an arc. Arcs are always drawn counterclockwise. We've been taught that our whole AutoCAD life. You can override it. Just recently, they gave you the option using the control key to override that counterclockwise direction. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You pick the center of an arc. Okay, it wants to go counterclockwise, doesn't it? Okay, I want it to go the other way. Well, let me go the other way. Hold the control key down, and it will let you draw an arc clockwise. All right, let's see. Come back over here really quickly. I hope you guys are doing okay. Hang in there. Now, the only thing I did not show you, uh, if you've ever had a viewport inside of another viewport, you know how hard it is to get inside that inner viewport, right? You end up having to move them around just so you can get inside of it. Don't do that. Save yourself some time. If you use Control-R, you can cycle through all of your viewports until you get to the one that you want. You don't have to move any of them. Control-R. Used to be control V, and then control V became paste, and you couldn't even do it for a while until finally they gave it a new assignment of R. Right. So I love system variables. They allow you to manage your world. There's way too many of them. It's hard to keep them straight. But if you know a few choice system variables, you can uh, do some pretty amazing things in AutoCAD. These are just a few of my favorites, a couple of my favorites. If you are not a fan, of the tray notification like you see in the lower right hand corner. Did you know that you can set tray notify to zero to off and you'll get no more of those little bubbles. Bubbles be gone. All right. And the other ones I'm going to show you. Let's go back over to our fancy tips drawing. I just use this drawing because it works so well for what I'm showing. This is a line. All right. I am going to go into well, let's make sure I didn't undo it. I don't think I did. Okay, I did. I'm going to go into the p-edit command, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this line. As you know, I'm going to pick it, and it says, oh, object selected is on a polyline. Do you want to turn it into one? And a word. How many times have you seen that, right? It's kind of annoying, because I went into the p-edit command. Of course, I want to turn it into a polyline. Don't ask me that question. So we hit an enter. In fact, if you say no, what happens? It kicks you out. <laughs> It's a silly command, silly little odd, little notice in there. So there is a system variable called p-edit, except if you set that to 1, it will never ask you that question again. The world will be a better place, one less click in your life. Let's go back into p-edit. Let's pick it again. It will not tell me that it's not a polyline. It will just turn it into one, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right, let me warn you, though, you are programmed. You hit an extra enter to get past that. Yes, you are. So now if you hit an extra enter, you will actually kick yourself right out of the p-edit command. So you have to pay attention. Yeah, you'll catch on eventually. But yeah, I've, I, when it first came out, I was always jumping out of the p-edit command by accident. What else? If I go into the text command, you can see that I changed my default text stream to say holidays because holidays make me happy. And by default, that sample text string is A, B, C. Oh, how boring is that? Life is too short. They have a sample text string of A, B, C. Let's make it something exciting. How do you change it? M, T, big string. I have no idea what it stands for. I don't even think I want to know what it stands for. All I know is it allows me to change my default text string. What would you like it to be today? Well, let's do CAD soft in honor of them. Okay, now if I go into text, you will see that it says, right, put it to something that makes you happy, Santa or whatever makes you happy, right? So that is MT jig string. Now we have a lot of system variables inside of AutoCAD. There's so many of them. So I think the best way to manage them is with this express tool that I can't even pronounce called SysV Dialog or whatever. Now, you LT users, unfortunately, won't be able to do this, but you will see that there is a system, a little command that allows you to control your system variables, and you can see why I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> the dialogue, I don't know how you say that. 
So here are all of my system variables. And I love the fact that it tells me what the possible options are. It tells me what the initial value was if you changed it. Um, let's go take a look at MT jigs right now. It is not smart enough. It doesn't have that autocomplete. It's an old, excuse me, an older command. So, but it does support wildcard. So if I type in MT and I put an asterisk, it will find all of the system variables that start with MT for those of you who know or remember your wildcards. So that's kind of a bummer. Otherwise, you would just, you know, roll through them until you found it. But I told you I'm lazy. So you can see on here that uh, it tells me what the current value is. It tells me the default value. I can change it here. Maybe I want to change it to Santa or something like that. And then I can say OK to save it. Now, this particular system variable is saved in the registry. That means it affects all of my join files, right? Whenever I go into text, it will say Santa as my default text string. So that's kind of an important thing to know. It might say drawing, and that means it's only saved in the current drawing. Registry means all drawings. Now here's the trick. If you have all your system variables set up exactly the way you want them, you want to save those settings just in case things go terribly wrong. You want to be able to reset those very quickly. So there is an option. Um, let's actually say OK. Let me go back in. There is an option, let's get rid of that, that allows you to save all of your system variables out to a file. Just remember where you put the file, it has an extension of SVF, and then if you save all of your system variables out to a file and things go badly, all you have to do is read it back in, and it will reset all your system variables back to the way you like them to be. Highly recommend that especially if you're like a CAD manager and you're working with people where things go badly on their system a lot. <laughs> you know who you are. All right, back over to the PowerPoint presentation. And let's see, where are we? How far are we? Not enough time. <laughs> All right, that's fine. So the next set of commands have to do with dimensioning. And this was my favorite feature in 2016. So if you have 16 or higher, you can do these new, smart, one-stop shop dimensioning. It uses this new tool called the dim command. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to hop over and just show it to you really, really quickly. Right, so the new dim tool, if you go to annotate, it's this guy right here. It's got like this little half a sun because it's a happy command. It will make you happy. I don't really know what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this one-stop top of dimension, take a look at the bottom of the screen, and you will see, you'll see if I stop moving around, I'm going to do it again, because I moved around, you will see that you're in a dim mode, can you see that it says dim, it executes a dim command, not the same as the old dim command that came out when AutoCAD first was, was you know, written, so this guy is much better, much smarter, as I move my cursor around, all I have to do is hover over an object and pick where I want the dimension to go, look how fast. It's psychic. It knows exactly what you want. I can hammer out a bunch of dimensions very quickly. Let's face it. Nobody says when they go into the office, oh, yay, I get to dimension today. Said by nobody else. Okay, what if I want to do an angular dimension? Just pick two objects that are not parallel, and you will decide that you wanted to do an angular dimension. Look how easy it is. So friendly. I want to do radial or diameter. I want to dimension this circular staircase. Okay, let's see if I can get the radial one. Radial, and if I can't get it, no problem. I can just come down and, and click on the command line for whatever it is I'm after. You can see I have quite a few options on here. So I can switch it and stream if I need to, right? I'm still in dim mode. I have not left dim mode. It's awesome. What happens if I'm going to grab a dimension here. I'm going to put it right on top of another dimension. Make my drafting teacher upset again. She won't like it. Okay, now take a look at the command line. Can you see this? There are options. Move away. It's smart. It's like you didn't really mean to do that. Move away, break up, replace, or none. None just leaves it the way it is. Your drafting teacher will still be upset. Let's try. Move away. Look at that. So the, play, the, the one I just placed, it wins. It stays put, right? And the other one, the other dimension, is moved away. All right, let's do this again. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to grab this object here. I'm going to 
hook it right up to that same dimension. It still knows it's on top of an existing dimension. This time, let's do break up. Okay, so it actually is not the correct dimension style. I should probably that. It's not the right dimension style, but nevertheless, it did break up that dimension to make a continued dimension. I should fix that style, shouldn't I? And then last but not least, big wishes request. I'm going to actually hit an enter to get out of dim mode. You can hit an escape. To get out of dim mode, if you want to undo it, you should undo it any dimension while you're in dim mode so you don't accidentally undo all of them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click on this text. I just want to point out that now there are slider bars for text, thanks to Augie and their wish list, the Autodesk User Group International. If you're not a member, sign up. It's free. Autodesk User Group International, Augie.com. Look at this. You can control the slider bars. You can control the width of the paragraph now inside of AutoCAD. That came out inside of AutoCAD 2016. Where am I? I'm only five minutes behind. All right, while I'm here, I'm not going to jump over to the PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm just going to show you. I would click that X in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Click that X in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. It will take you out to the Autodesk Exchange. Specifically, now, now it's the Autodesk App Store. That's right, they just changed the name. I need to update my information. The Autodesk App Store, and by default, if you go to it inside of AutoCAD, it's going to give you AutoCAD apps. If you go to it inside of Revit, it's going to take you to apps for that. But you, you can pick whichever product you're after. I'm in AutoCAD, and I'm happy to be stay there. It shows you the most popular apps, no surprise, are all free. It also shows you the most popular paid apps, but you see some of them are like $5. Uh, most of them aren't too expensive. Uh, this depends whatever your application is, but I bet you there is an app in here just for you, and I highly recommend that you take a look at these. It's like, you know, if Autodesk didn't put that command in you've been waiting for, I bet you somebody wrote it for you. Right, back over to AutoCAD. I do want to show you if I go to add-ins, that's where all your apps are stored. I have Hangman, which we don't have time to show you, but it's actually a command that was written by a wonderful programmer at Autodesk. It's sanctioned by Autodesk, and hey, it's fun to play. And I know you would only play it on your breaks or after work, right? There is an app manager that allows you to control uh, you know, whether you want to, if you want to uninstall it, make sure they're all up to date. It apparently has no clue what this Autodesk app is right here. But you can control the apps that you have loaded in. Just right click on any of them and you can get rid of them or do whatever it is you want to do. So there's an app manager, of course there is, to make sure and help you successfully manage your apps. Now we will go back over to the PowerPoint. There's the Autodesk Exchange, which is now the App Store, which apparently I was able to take the right screenshot, but I did not change the name on the slide. Bad land, bad land. All right, Autodesk Seek, I'll show that to you, and then I'm also going to um, show you how to really quickly clean up your drawing files. All right, so I'm going to jump over, because that's important. I'm all about nice, clean drawing files. So Autodesk Seek, there is all type of types of content out there for you. Do not reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. If I go to insert and I go to content, you will see that there is an option right here that allows you to go out to Autodesk Seek and search for blocks. You can also search for Revit families and things like that, but um, I'm going to look for a chair. I need to put a chair in my join file. A lot of companies have made content in hopes that you will use their content and ideally buy their stuff. In this case, buy their chairs. So you can see in here, there's some DWG files, there's PDFs, you can see there's Revit files in here, a bunch of chairs, you can tell it what type of chair you're after. There'll be so many chairs, you won't believe it. All different types of file types, you can come in here and you can give it as much information as you want, whatever you're after, and you can grab those objects and drag and drop them right into your AutoCAD and save you lots of time. I don't like to be in this, but that's not a best seat. I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. And it will save you a lot of time. All right, now, we're going to go on this drawing file. Oh, this command takes a while. 
We're gonna, I want to get rid of duplicate objects. It happens all the time when you bring XREPs in and things like that. You get too many objects. There's a very cool command called overkill. I'm gonna be a big girl. I'm gonna grab it from the ribbon. Home tab of the ribbon, modify. It's a broom, of course, because it's going to clean up your drawing. Who doesn't love that? I'm just going to say all. Oh, I want you to find everything. Okay, there were some things that were in paper space and at different, you know, different space. <laughs> we'll, we'll grab those. And then you have the ability to give it more information about how you want to clean it up. Do you want it to combine collinear objects together so that there'd just be one continuous object, like you might have a line on top of another line or a line on top of a polyline. Do you want it to combine or optimize polyline segments? And the all different information in here, which I just don't have time to go over right now, I so you can just look that up. Just know that this command exists. I'm going to go ahead and hit an OK, and it will look at all the objects it deleted, 54, and it also corrected a whole bunch of overlapping objects so that it made them, you know, all one continuous object and saved a lot of time eventually because you want your drawings all nice and clean, right? So we don't want to have more objects than we absolutely need. There's that. There is this very cool tool called Dim Reassoce. I love this. You know, when you dimension or when you look at somebody else's drawing with dimensions, I should say, you don't really know if they cheated and they overrode the dimension. There's no easy way to tell. You can't tell by looking at it, right? Wow. You want to know if they were cheating, because when they do, when you type in another value, you override the dimension text, bad things happen. You don't, don't be doing that. So there is a command called dim reassoce. Not dim reassociate. That's a completely different command. Dim reassoce, it is also an express tool. So you LT folks, I'm afraid, won't be able to use it. So I want to check the entire drawing to make sure that my dimension values are accurate. So I'm just going to say off. Oh. Now I want you to note that it found two offenders, three offenders. This guy, this guy, and this guy were all overridden. Shame, shame, shame. Bad, bad, bad. I'm going to go ahead and hit an extra enter, and it will show you the actual values, not the values that somebody plugged in. And then you can go smack the coworker that overread their dimension. <laughs> All right, back over. To, oh, and then the last thing I want to show you: if you go into the purge dialog box, and hopefully you're purging your drawings once again, keep them nice and clean. I, these unnamed objects were added in within the last few releases. I love that. Just want to get rid of everything you don't, you know, don't need to have in the drawing file. But one of the things that is not in here is something called reg apps. So if you are uh, using a variety of different apps inside of AutoCAD or somebody gave you some routines or whatever the situation is, sometimes you get this residual large files that go with it. I find that if I have a file that's really big, I'm not really sure why, I will run the purge command, but you have to use it, the command line interface of it, dash purge, all right, the command line interface of it because regapps doesn't show up in the dialog box. But here you'll see this option for regapps. If you click on that, it will ask you if you have any specific names you want to purge. You just want to purge them all. I'm just going to go ahead and say I want all of them. And then it asks me if, if I want to see what I'm purging. Well, I'm going to say yes to that. But you can see there are some, there are some pretty interesting uh, registered apps that I don't even know where they came from that are really taking up space in my drawing file. So you could go through these one at a time, and you can decide if you want to get rid of them. It doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't hurt to take a look. Your life will be fine without them, trust me. Get rid of them. Clean up your drawing file. I said no, but you're going to say yes. Please note the default is no. And then I am running out of time. I think I'll show you these last three. And then, um, sorry, I didn't make it to my 60, but I do like these. So let's really quickly run through the last three on here. Quick one, you don't have time. Find them. Oh, goodness. I can't get to it. There we go. Because of the go to meeting is in the way. Here we go. We're going to go down to last but not least. If you work with tables, I think you'll find these tips helpful. 
For example, I want 1.8 to go in all of these boxes. I'm lazy, I told you that. Did you know that you can click on one cell and you can grab that little blue box and just drag it down and it will fill in all the cells with the same information. Yay. Okay. You can also have it sequence. I'm going to go ahead and hit, hold the shift down so I have two cells. And now if I grab the blue box and pull it down, you will see that it's sequenced. So it needs at least two boxes so it knows what number to start with. It also needs to know, you know what the, the delta is between those two numbers so it can figure it out. But that should save you some time. And then last but not least, hopefully you also know that you can add table breaks into your table so that you can easily break them up. Oh, AutoCAD's slowing down a little bit. It must know that I'm running out of time. <laughs> it's slowing down. So that will not work unless you have table, table breaks on. Easy to turn on. Go into Properties, and you will see that there is an option to turn table breaks on. Enable it. Yes. Now, I probably want the top labels across them all. Right? It looks kind of funny without the top labels on there, so you can easily add those in. Right? Goodness, that was a 30-second table explanation. <laughs> Hopefully you'll find that helpful. All right, now, I do not have time to show you tips to abuse your coworkers because it's at the top of the hour. So I'll have to come back and do another presentation, and I'll have to time it better. We'll have to work with Mary on that. Um, besides, it's Christmas. You shouldn't be abusing your coworkers anyway, or the holidays, whatever holiday you choose to celebrate. So last but not least, please know that you can download my latest tips and tricks booklet. It's absolutely free. Autodesk.com slash AutoCAD tips, and it contains tips for AutoCAD 2016 and 17, and a good portion of those are also valid for LT. And thank you so much for joining me. If you have additional questions, it's good. you can just email me at lynn.allen at Autodesk.com. Um, if you want more tips, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm a big Twitter fanatic at Lynn underscore Allen. I saw somebody who said they were going to be on this webcast today, and I said hi to them. And uh, on that note, I'm going to turn it back over to Mary. You're on, Mary. Hope Thanks, you guys are really going. <laughs> um, I was asking, uh, I don't see any questions. Um, so thank you. Uh, and so I think anybody that has a question, you saw Lynn's email, so please direct them directly to her. Uh, but I want to thank you all for joining us today. So, you know, we are hosting one more webinar in this series on January 24th. Uh, Lynn will be presenting on the future of making things. I think it will be a fascinating time. So when I send out uh, follow-up emails to each of you, I will include the link to the recording, and I will also include the link to sign up for the January 24th uh, webinar if you haven't already done so. So I really want to thank you all again, and I look forward to that recording. And if you have any questions, you can contact me directly also. And so with that, I'm just going to say happy holidays to everybody, and please enjoy your long holiday weekend. Thanks, Lynn. Of course. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Bye-bye now. <laughs>